characteristics of the chemical equilibrium. If you take an example of a, a reversible reaction, suppose we have A plus B, these are the reactants and they react and form C and D. And if this is a reversible reaction where the C and D again combine and form the A and B. When you take a reaction mixture, you know, suppose we take a vessel and you mix there A and the B there. Okay, so what we find at the start when the reaction is about to start, the concentration of the reactants is very high, right? In the reaction mixture, the concentration of the reactants A and the B will be very high. And with time, the concentration of A and B that will decrease there, right? So the concentration of the reactants will decrease. But the concentration of the products, initially it was zero, but then it will keep on increasing. So that means the C and D will be formed more and more. But since the reaction is reversible, that means the C and D, they again combine and they form again the reactants AB. So with time, when you, you know, carry out this reaction, we find that initially the rate of concentration is very high and that keeps on decreasing here. You can see in the graph, the concentration of the reactants A and B, you know, if it is very high here, right, somewhere here. And with time, so with the time, what happens there? With the time, the concentration of the reactants decreases. Okay, and the concentration of the products, initially it was zero, the C and D, that was zero, so that will keep on increasing. But once you attain the equilibrium, what does the equilibrium mean? It, equilibrium means the rate of a forward reaction should be equal to the rate of backward reaction. So the rate at which A and the B are decomposed will be equal to the rate at which the A and B is again formed, which means that once you attain the equilibrium, you know, once the rate of a forward reaction is equal to the rate of a backward reaction, once you attain the equilibrium there, the concentration of the reactants do not change, the concentration of the products do not change. It doesn't mean they are same, right? It doesn't mean say they are same. Rather, actually the concentration doesn't change further, right? So once you attain the state of equilibrium, see, this is the point, this is the time at which you attain the state of an equilibrium. And after that, what you will see the concentration of the reactants and the products and that will remain same with the time and that will remain same and that won't change further right that will not increase or decrease this is the products and these are the reactants so that means once you attain an equilibrium the concentration of the reactants and the products do not change equilibrium is dynamic in nature that is one of the characteristic feature of a equilibrium what does it mean the equilibrium is dynamic in nature rate of forward reaction and rate of backward reactions both are going on you know it doesn't mean that the reaction has stopped here that's why you know the concentrations do not change reactions are going on the forward reaction and the backward reaction reactants are converted you know they are they are continuously changing into the products and products are, are also continuously changing into the reactants but since both rates are same both rates are same the net effect is zero before you attain the equilibrium, you know, from this time here, when you start the reaction up to this equilibrium point, we find that, you know, here, rate of forward reaction is, you know, is, is more than the rate of backward reaction. But once you attain the equilibrium, both rates are same, the net effect is zero. That's what we call as a dynamic equilibrium, correct? We have a dynamic equilibrium. Equilibrium is always dynamic in nature, right? That means the reactants are continuously changing into the products and the products are continuously changing into the, you know, into the reactants, but since both rates are same, the net effect is zero there. The observable properties of a system becomes constant once the equilibrium is reached. So there are so many observable properties, right, of an equilibrium. It depends what type of a system we have. A closed vessel in which, you know, we have a hydrogen and iodine uh, under equilibrium actually with the HI, when you start the reaction, initially the intensity of the, you know, this purple color here because of the iodine in the gaseous state, that will be high, right? If you take a hydrogen in the gaseous state, which is colorless, iodine in the gaseous state is purple in color and the HO is again the colorless, right? So what do you see? You will find that when you take a mixture here, hydrogen and the iodine, you know, in a closed vessel, the intensity of the purple color will be very high. But once this iodine starts reacting with the HI, that means the concentration of the HI will now decrease with the time 
and HI concentration will keep on increasing. So that means the intensity of the purple color will decrease. Correct? But once you attain, once you attain the equilibrium, that means the rate at which this iodine, I2 is being decomposed, right? At the same rate, it is being formed in the backward direction. So now, once you attain the equilibrium, the intensity, intensity of this purple color in the system, that will remain constant. That will not change further. That's what it means that observable properties of a system becomes constant once you attain the equilibrium. So for any system, you know, if you have a gaseous system, a liquid system, whatever it is, all the observable properties that you can observe, right, actually, they will become constant. They won't change further. And one more property of a gaseous system, you know, if you have an equilibrium in the gaseous system is that once you attain equilibrium, okay, in a gaseous system, this equilibrium is only possible there as long as we have a closed system. Correct? Because if you have any gaseous component in a reaction mixture and you cannot attain the equilibrium in the open vessel, you have to maintain a closed system. So that means for a gaseous systems, we can attain the equilibrium only in the closed vessels. But if you have an equilibrium, you know, where you have a liquid state only, correct? Suppose, you know, you take an example of an acetic acid, which is actually in the liquid state. If you dissolve the acetic acid in the water, so there is again an equilibrium, right? There's an equilibrium between the acetic acid molecules while, you know, they dissociate into the acetate ion, CH3, CO negative here, and the H plus ions, H3O positive ions. So actually these are the, you know, this is a liquid state, right? So you don't need a closed system. You need a closed system only. You can, you know, get uh, equilibrium for the gaseous system only in the closed vessels. But if you have a liquid state, you know, suppose you take a beaker that contains water and in that water, if you add some acetic acid, there will be an equilibrium, right? There will be an equilibrium and you don't need a closed vessel there. You can get the equilibrium, uh, you know, for the gaseous systems only in the closed vessels because, you know, if you, because if you open it here, right, the gases components, they will escape out and therefore you will not be able to attain a equilibrium. A reversible reaction in which we use a catalyst also, suppose, you know, we have a catalyst here. This catalyst cannot change the equilibrium point. You know, it cannot change the state of an equilibrium. Only the catalyst will help us in the attainment of an equilibrium. Correct? You know, sometimes if you have a reaction, you, you mix the A and the B in a vessel, you take a beaker and then you put some A and the B and you see that the reaction is very slow. Then you add some catalyst there and you get the products, you know, C and D very fast. And obviously you will get a backward reaction also, you know, very quickly because you are increasing the concentration of the products. So what the catalyst does here, you know, if you don't take a catalyst here in the reaction mixture, this uh, you know, this uh, equilibrium, it will take a lot of time to, at this system will take a lot of time to attain equilibrium. Okay, the system will take a lot of time to attain equilibrium. But once you attain, you know, add a catalyst there, you can attain the equilibrium quickly. So we can say a catalyst cannot alter the state of an equilibrium. Rather, it will help in the attainment of that equilibrium quickly. So without, you know, adding a catalyst, for example, for example, in this reaction, Without any, you know, without you take a, uh, without you add a catalyst here, suppose you attain the equilibrium here after 10 hours, right? It takes 10 hours for the system to attain the equilibrium, to attain, you know, a state in which the rate of forward direction is equal to the rate of backward direction. But if you add a catalyst, what happens? You attain the same state of an equilibrium, let's suppose in the one hour, correct? That means, a catalyst helps us in the attainment of an equilibrium. It does not change the state of an equilibrium. That means it will not change the concentrations actually, the ratio of the concentrations. Rather it will change only the, the rate at which you attain the equilibrium. Hope you got it. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.